special guest in the house. She's smelling good, looking good, too. <laughs> Miss Coco Brown, how are you today? I'm good, girl. I'm good. Rest in peace to the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, honey. Yes, we just, got, we just got breaking news that Aretha mm. F- Franklin has passed. What's your favorite Aretha Franklin do memory? Right woman, honey. Do Right Woman. That's your favorite yes, song. Yes, honey. Yes, honey. If you want a do right woman, you need to be a do right man. Hello. Okay. Yes, honey. I, used to, I still sing that song. And of course, you know, you know, natural woman, mm-hmm. you know, um, uh, the whole sparkle soundtrack. Let's just keep it real. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's I grew up on Saturdays cleaning the house to this woman is a little girl between my aunties, my grandma, my mom, you know, and then, you know, to, to have my mom in the car, she, whenever she was going through something with my daddy, that's all she played was some daggone Aretha. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's like, um, I, I wish she could have stayed around to see Jennifer Hudson portray her. And let me tell you, just, Jennifer is going to shut that she, down. Girl, what? And it's funny because, you know, it's funny. It was always a dream of mine to play Aretha Franklin. Really? I can't sing. <laughs> so I had to understand my limitations. So I'm just glad they got somebody that can. Okay? Exactly. For real. And you know what? Jennifer, she, did she win an Oscar for Dream Girls? I do believe she did. Well, she's about to win another one. She and sure Aretha is. handpicked her. Yes. Well, I'm glad she, Riri, bless, bless your soul, honey. I'm just glad you stopped saying Halle Berry because we were like, girl, go on now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the earlier years. Right. Maybe in the earlier I years. I always said Jennifer Hudson was the, 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 the shoe in. Yeah, you so know. we'll yeah. have to look out for that. But, okay, so speaking of Aretha Franklin mm-hmm. and uh, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, yes. me, this is your grown-ass woman tour. Yes, honey, yes. Okay, so why do you want to name it that? Because that's where I am, you know what I mean? I'm not out here twerking for no coins. Talk about it. I'm not out here selling my soul for no red bottoms. Uh-huh. Everything I got, I earned. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Every My homes, my... My, my designer purses, mm-hmm. my child's college fund, I did that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I tell people all the time, it's different between being a grown woman. See, a man, I want a man, not need a man. It's a difference. Talk about it. Okay. And when a man comes into my life and does anything for me, honey, that's a bonus, not a necessity. You know what I'm saying? My phone doesn't get cut off, honey. <laughs> okay. Talk about it because so you can it's, handle it. It's a it. different mentality. You know, I tell people all the time, we're not representing the grown woman. You know, you either got the young chicks out here selling her soul for some red bottoms and a cell phone bill. And followers on the gram. Okay, followers on the gram. Okay, let's keep it real. Or you got the chicks that are bitter and angry and just, you know, because I can't find love and all these men ain't crap and all that. Where's the single successful sister that's very comfortable in her skin, who's achieved a level of greatness and just wants a man to share it with? Where are we represented? Okay, they're everywhere, but I just don't think that media likes to portray them in a positive light. Exactly, exactly. I was telling some friends of mine the other day, I love the show Insecure. But when you're a 40-some-year-old woman watching it, that's nostalgia. I went through that 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. Where's the show at that represents chicks like me trying to find a dude that may not be on my level, but he going to meet me hustle for hustle. Mm-hmm. Where's that dude that is going to compliment me? Why do I have to date down, date dumb, date, you know, beneath me? Why do I have to settle? Because I chose to be ambitious. See, grown ass woman is a mind state. It's not just about your bank account and how many homes and red bottoms you got. It's a mind state. It's, where you, it's how you think. Talk about you know what it. I'm saying mm-hmm. I'm a grown ass woman. You know okay, what I'm so but hold on. Before we get into all the relationship yes. talk, Coco yes. Brown is going to be at the improv yes. tonight, 7 30, Friday, 7 30 and 10, Saturday, 7 o'clock and 10, and then Sunday, 7 o'clock. We have to get to the reason why you're yes. here. Come see me, y'all. Comedy Soul Food will be served up hot. Bring your iPads, bring your notebooks, bring your recordings because honey mama is dropping pearls okay so yes you you're saying class is now in session hashtag hashtag grown ass woman tour why do you think that it's so hard for women to find I I feel like it's hard to find love these days why do you think it's hard to find love I think that nowadays I mean I don't know what words I can say on this radio station but H-O-E-S are winning right now (laughs) (laughs) and it seems like that's what men want you know, there was a time that he might have dated it, but he showed didn't take it in public. Exactly. He showed didn't wife it. Mm-hmm. Now men are proud to be number 219. Don't you know that makes you gay by default? Women are receivers. Every time we're with a man, we keep a piece of his soul within us. Mm. So if you be with a woman that's been with a whole bunch of men, now your butt is gay by default. You better find you a good girl that got single digits. That's all I'm saying. Taking us to church early <laughs> in the morning. My goodness. I'm just saying. You are. So it's like you up here chasing the booty and the, and the body. But she has no substance. And that's the thing, too. I don't just blame the men because women are not being held accountable to be anything more than their beauty and their bodies. That's why you got chicks out here that can't cook, can't take care of their kids. 
Don't know how to speak life into a man. Don't know how to sign no checks on her own. Don't know how to write a balance a checkbook on her own. Because she's been a kept woman. She's been taught that your beauty is all you need and a man will take care of you. But therefore, you're giving man ultimate control. Mm. I'm just saying, boo-boo. I like being able to say, hey, I know how to play the game of vulnerable. I mm. like to play you. I, I know how to play the game. But is it hard for, are you single? Is it hard, has it been hard for you to find love? I think the problem is you got a lot of men, you know, male gold diggers out here now. Look, Ooh, and they are. And you got so many successful sisters. We may not be Oprah's, honey, but we dad gonna show ain't precious mama. Now, do you think it's because uh, there's a lot of broken homes out that that people are coming from because i don't think that necessarily because you come from a broken home no but i do think that there's a lot of lack of um positive black relationships and marriages out there we don't see it we don't see them so how can you they'd rather show us love and hip-hop than lebron and his wife very true they'd rather show us the brokenness of bill and camille than show us the strength of will and jada so do you think that we're allowing our children to be raised by hip-hop in the media and they think that that's the right way to conduct their life? If you're a parent and you're allowing that, then it's your fault. But there's a lot of babies raising babies, too. True that. True that. True that. Um, I, I want to get to the that, root of the problem. Okay, first of all, I'm talking about grown-ass women. I'm not talking about the baby. Okay, okay. I mean, real talk, okay. I can't relate to that. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, I became a mother at 39 years old. Mm-hmm. I had done all the freak nicks and all-star weekends. <laughs> you had your fun. Before I became a mother. Yes. So when I became a mother, that became my priority. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be the old chick in the club wearing stockings and kidding heels. I'm grown. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be the Capital Jazz Cruise or the Tom Joyner Cruise. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know my lane. Yes. You know, I got friends who are the old chicks in the club. And I'm like, girl, you go to All-Star Weekend and you ask, oh, which one is your son? Is he a rookie? No, mm. you in there trying to get you a ball player. If you don't take your old behind home and go write a memoir or something, you're too old for this. Mm. I don't want to be that chick. You know, it's, it's a mentality. The young girls, they're being taught from the love and hip-hops and all that crap that fighting on TV, degrading yourself... Fighting over one penis, I mean, is the thing to do. And that the more you pump your butt up with steroids and injections, and, and the problem is men want that. You keep wanting to build But I don't chick. understand, though, because they're like, oh, I don't want my girl all out because there, but these are the are ones that they're wifing. The perception they need to walk in the room with something on their arm that their man goes, Doo! and if he doesn't get that when you're on his arm, you're not worth Do you think that it's ever going to change? Because here we're seeing Steph and Aisha. We're seeing, you know, LeBron and his wife, Beyonce and Jay-Z. You don't think that people are going to want to? No, because men have fragile egos. They must feel like they always have it. Mm. And usually a part of that saying that I have it is what's on my arm. That's why you got men out here marrying chicks and wife and chicks that done been around the world and I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she takes them (laughs) coins that she gets from every sponsor. Because, yes, it's called sponsors. Because mm-hmm. men up here thinking them black channels and them Amber Roses is real. Honey, them build the chicks. Honey, them call sponsorships. <laughs> Amber Rose was a fat white woman working in Winn Dixie five years Woo! ago. Okay? <laughs> black channels making flip flops in Vietnam five years ago. Don't act like they look like that from birth. Honey, that's called sponsorship. And if you don't mind being a sponsor, then be a sponsor. But don't lump us all in the same category as if we all do need sponsors. Men don't want nothing they can't control. Mm. Okay, let's just mm-hmm. keep it real talk. Very true. If you give a child a remote control c- car, you give a little boy a remote control car, and the batteries die, does he still play with it? No. He needs something he can control. Mm-hmm. And see, women, some women need to be controlled. It's a status point for them. They, I mean, I, I've got friends that I love dearly, but they go from dude to dude keeping their lifestyle up. It's what they do. But I don't think that this is a new thing. I think that it's always been it's happening. It's always been that way. It's just not in the open now. And more people want it, and there's websites like said, to do back it. Back in the day, a man might have messed with a hoe, but he ain't taking it in public. Now they take him in public. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day, a chick might have been, you know, uh, a, a little a little friendly, mm-hmm. <laughs> but she didn't put it on Broad Street. Now, it's the thing to be friendly on Instagram and have a million followers, you being friendly. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing now. I'm big on teaching young girls and helping young girls understand you're more than your beauty and your body. You better have something else to fall back on. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing cute about you being a 47-year-old chick in the club. So Grays in Vegas. So <laughs> so let me ask you, last time when you came, we were talking about the Instagram uh, comedian. But do you ever see women that um, are kind of like maybe the groupie girl and they want to flip their career and they want to be <laughs> a, a, a comedian all of a sudden? Shall I laugh at them, honey? Unless you're going to be giving out. You know, you know everybody thinks comedy's easy. 
They always they think, think if yes. they can make somebody laugh and get a million views on Instagram, in one minute they can be a comedian. And as my boy Kevin Hart says, they're going to learn today. Because <laughs> when you hit that stage and you got to deliver 45 minutes, boo-boo, you'll learn today. And the thing is, unfortunately, you have audiences that these new age audiences don't understand what stand-up is about. Mm -hmm. They'll go and watch you do 45 minutes of bull crap and think you're brilliant because they have nothing else to compare it to because nothing really is on TV right now to show you what real stand-up is. Back in the day, you had bars, you had levels, you had your dev jams, your comic views, your you know your one-hour, half-hour specials, whatever, whatever, whatever. They're there, but even when they're putting the bull crap in those hour and half hour specials, mm -hmm. real people, it, it, go do your research if you really are a comedy lover. Don't say that's real comedy. It's mm -hmm. not. But when you've got audiences who will pay top dollar for the selfie, they're not paying it for the talent. Exactly. They're paying that $75 a ticket for the selfie. Mm -hmm. Because this person has 2 million, 3 million followers on Instagram. For the real comic who actually has talent and material, it's a shame to say, Sierra says it, you got to level up, get your followers up. Because unfortunately, <laughs> your talent doesn't matter. Yeah, the old school people who appreciate stand-up comedy will still come support you, but they're not the ones on social media. Exactly. It's the youngins that don't know no better. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask yourself, okay, do I do a stupid-ass video for a minute to get these youngins, or do I stay on my ground and be a true stand-up comic and just keep trying to struggle through the means? Mm. I've seen some vet comics do some stupid crap on Instagram for followers. It's come to that point. That's you know true. what I'm saying? So it's up to you how much of your soul are you willing to sell. So do you think that it's, um, so how is it for you? Because do you like to do the Instagram? Do you? I have to have something to say. Yeah. And I'm not doing stupidness. I mean, I'm just not going like, to, luckily as me as a woman, <laughs> I can put on makeup and a wig and I'm still a woman. Mm -hmm. But when you got men out here doing that constantly, it's like, you can't be funny in your own lane as your own sex. You can't be funny as a man. You got to be a woman now. Mm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but let me go try to be a man. Y'all going to be coming over here just coming for me left and right. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not, I, I just feel like, do you? Whatever, whatever makes you sleep well at night, do you? Some people love to sleep on a bed of money with no soul. Do you? Some of us like to have our soul intact and have just enough money to get back. I don't know. But... I'm not going to sacrifice my self-respect. I've seen some chicks and some people in this business, you know, be the brunt of the joke, be the fat black brunt of the joke, be this, be that, for the, for the, for the possibility of getting the followers and being, I'm so not doing that. Mm -hmm. I want an Emmy one day, and you ain't getting an Emmy being, you know, a coon. I'm sorry, did you say that out loud? No, you said yeah, it. I did. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just, maybe I'm stupid. I'm going to get my followers, and I have my followers. I know I have real followers. Coco Brown, one funny mom on Instagram, them real followers. Twitter, them real followers. Because they know when I speak or when I post something, it's genuine. I'm just not out here just trying to bash people and, and, and get a laugh and get fun. When you follow me, you're following the truth. You're following the genuine, authentic Coco Brown. And that's why you've been able to do it for so many years. Yeah, I, I do me. I stay in my lane. I create my lane. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I have to do the videos and all that. And I get told you got to have more followers, you know, if you want to be considered, you know, um, um, respectable and, and, and one, of the, one of the team players. I get that. But, you know, it used to be a time that my IMDB cared, that that, that mattered. How many credits? Nobody cares about your credits anymore. How many? Your credits are your followers. Exactly. And you just have to conform, but you can still can conform to your own liking. You don't have to fall into the bandwagon of everybody else if you can help it. Mm. Look at you. I'm just saying. I know? love what you're preaching this morning. Saying, I, I love it. I'm here to preach, girl. You're not no, a, but I, I love it. I'm lady wig, so I'm feeling some type of way. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so you're going to be at the improv. Yes. So are we only talking about relationships? No, uh, girl. We talk about everything. We talk about everything. My six-year-old, you know, who... Kindergarten? You know, Kindergarten? First grade. First grade. First grade. Wow. Honey, lose the teeth. I just recently found out he was straight, and I'm like, praise Jesus. <laughs> um, you know, he loves the ladies. He told me he needed to wear cologne to class. I Ooh. said, really, six. Okay, he's you ready. Know, but he loves the ladies, honey. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get him to get away from the white ones. I'm like, come on, come on home, baby. Come on home. <laughs> but hey, you know what? But hey, do you, boo, as long as he's ladies. <laughs> um, you know, I talk about everything. I talk about what's going on in politics. You know, I've been... I mean, I don't. I ain't gonna say it's a well worked out joke, but I sure talk about Omarosa. Mm. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Wow. Y'all sleeping on her? 
I that wish I could. A mole. Now let me tell you. Y'all think she a sellout? That chick a mole. Yo. I do wish I could argue like Omarosa. I will give her that. She's a mole. She's, she, a, she's a spy. Mm. I, yeah, I said it. Like y'all thinking she a sellout and she was all up. Donald Trump's butt and being a sellout and all this and all that. Now, I can't speak for Stacey Dash and Kanye. Mm. That's a whole nother level of Kool-Aid. That is. But Omarosa, I think Omarosa has been playing this like a fiddle. She got in, got the information, got fired, and just was sitting, waiting for the time to take this whole... Do you think she's going to get in trouble, though? Honestly, because Omarosa wants to stay relevant, I don't think she'll care. Hmm. That's the one thing that makes her even more dangerous. But do you think that she has to be worried for her life like Stormy Daniels? Because remember, Stormy had people following her. I'm not worried about no Stormy. <laughs> I'm just saying, though, she said that some guy met her up in the in the parking lot and threatened her, and she thought that it was somebody that the president had thrown a hit out there. So I don't know. know. Many women Donald Trump has slept with behind Melania's back. That's true. And Stormy Daniels is one chick. Well, I have to say slept, allegedly. with multiple porn stars. So unless this fool going around threatening all these hoes, excuse my French, I mean, come on. But I will say that not all of them had, you know, specials on CNN and Dateline and did interviews about it. He paid her hush money, and here and she is talking that, about it. Back to what we were talking about earlier. There was a time that if you got caught being a hoe, you didn't tell nobody. You didn't do interviews. You tried to play it off. You tried to get in some Jimmy Swag and stuff and get your soul right and pray. Now <laughs> it's like, I'm a hoe, and I want everybody to know it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they're wow. trying to get their followers up. But They're trying you, to, you know, have those hostings at the clubs. Seriously. The bottles popping. No, I don't I don't think Omarosa, I don't think she cares. Because the, the, the what makes her dangerous is that she's a black woman with the knowledge and the information uh, who will do whatever it takes to stay relevant. Hmm. And, and she's dangerous. And right now with race relations, the way they are, I mean, look at how we're acting because he called her a dog. I know. A lot of us have jumped back on the Omarosa bandwagon to defend that, even though we say we can't stand her. But it's it's she's extreme. She's got her black card revoked. You what you ain't gonna do is call this sister a dog. I.e., we knew what he really. But did. I mean, no no president should call any honey, woman that. Donald Trump done did so much crap that no president should ever do, honey. At this point, I'm I'm I'm, I'm just curious who's gonna be president next. I mean, seriously, I wouldn't be surprised if Larry Flint from Hustler would. Right? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be surprised at this point anybody. And I mean, seriously, at this point, anybody could run. He has made it the presidency, and it's like comedy right now. Ooh, anybody, uh-oh, uh-oh. anybody, <laughs> sorry about that, Arjun. Let me talk to you. Okay. Um, he's made the presidency open game, open fodder. It's almost like how Instagram comics have made stand up comedy. Ooh. Anybody can get in now. We can all run. You can run. You can run. We all can run. You know what I'm saying? It's like he's made it now. Anybody can be president. Anybody. And then we we told that as a child, Mm -hmm. but you know, in the back of our heads, you had to have certain levels of education and Mm -hmm. connections and yada, yada, yada. At least we thought. At least we thought. Now? But I guess if you have your followers up. Now? If you got 4 million followers on Instagram, you can be president. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Real talk. Well, hey, Black China might be our next first lady in office. Jesus, and I will move to Greece. (laughs) (laughs) Coco Brown, she's going to be at the Improv this weekend. Tonight, 7.30. Friday, 7.30 and 10. Saturday, 7 and 10. And then Sunday. And then I'm going to be giving away a four-pack of your tickets today. I'm going to be at Wing Busters on 75th and State Line. So make sure that you come out and see me if you want to. um, At Wing Busters. They they got wings. So I'm going to make them work for your tickets. Thank you, girl. Yes. Go swing some wings for these tickets. Yes. It's for a family four-pack. So um, it's for tonight's show as well so that's at 7 30 and again friday 7 30 and 10 if you want all the rest of the um times you can go to improvkc.com also coco brown for life.com that's your website that's website baby. it's a good website too because a lot Thank of time you. you go to people's websites and it's like all out of date no you got good pictures that's, thanks to jojo my incredible assistant shout out to jojo yes. um what do you have coming up for the rest of 2018 2019 well, when i leave here i'm going to la to shoot uh the new season of 911 on fox Woo-hoo! And then I leave there and go to Boston to shoot a new uh, horror movie called Lethal Injection. Ooh, when so is that I'm, supposed to come out? Uh, next year. Okay. Next year. And it's great, girl. All, all I can say about it, black werewolves. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. It's, chain. it's like you have it's, me intrigued. It's like, it, yes, yeah, it's like, it, yeah, it's like Get Out meets uh, American Werewolf in London. Oh, I'm it's ready for that. I'm yeah. ready. Okay, so look out for that. Anything else? 
a touring girl, the grown-ass woman tour is coming everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've got a movie I just did called His, Hers, and the Truth uh, with Dorian Wilson and, uh, you know, Terry Vaughn and Brad James. That comes out uh, later on this year. I've got a movie on Stars right now called The Other Side. Make sure y'all, you know, check that out on Stars. You know, I've just been kind of, you know, staying relevant. You know, I got a, I got a nice, I got a wig line coming out. I'm so excited because, you know, I love my wigs, honey. So I when is that coming out? Hopefully, if everything works out, it's coming out Christmas. Okay. Yes. And, so uh, stocking Brown, suffers. Yes, the Coco Brown wig line, honey. We, um, you know, we have got some incredible wigs coming out. Okay, let me ask you, let me ask you, because everybody's wearing like weaves and wigs. Are they like in a lab making this hair? Is this real hair coming from this real heads? Real it is bald-headed Asian women walking around right now for my wig line. But that's a lot of hair. <laughs> What's wrong with that? But I'm just saying, though, like, how are they as growing the hair you? that fast? Girl, come on, Nessie. You black. You know better. You know our hair don't grow that fast, girl. Like, no, you know, I'm, no, I'm saying these like, women that are making the wigs for our the wigs that we're wearing, how are they growing their hair so fast? There are 14 billion people in Asia. I know, but still. And, and and you say maybe a billion is selling hair. Do the math. Do the math. And then we ain't even went to India yet with a little baby's, you know, that virgin Remy comes off a baby's head. Mm. When they could, they let their hair grow until they're two, I believe, or three. Mm -hmm. And then they shave their head and that hair gets sold at a premium. It's a shame to say. You got me up here now. I'm about to be politically all incorrect asking me questions like this. No, but I mean, that's how the hair... Now, mind you, a lot of it's blends. Mm -hmm. People are getting, you know, synthetic blend with human hair. Sometimes you're getting the hair that falls on the floor after it's shaved, and they make it together to make follicles and make hair. That's why you got to know what kind of hair you're getting. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's funny how you know, people say, well, you should wear your natural hair. When brothers start accepting us for our natural hair, maybe we will. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, shit it! <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and it's a lot easier too. You ain't trying to date me if I'm walking around here looking like Angela Davis. <laughs> shit, it's only a certain kind of nose ring, cowrie shell, beating drums, eating seaweed. Brother wants a chick with nappy hair. Shit, <laughs> shit, <it. laughs> kill me with all that talk about. Well, these sisters can't wear their real hair because you don't like it, fool. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. When we wear the real hair, all of a sudden you got an issue with it. Mm -hmm. So shit it. <laughs> so stocking stuffers with Coco Brown. What, yes. Well, what's it called? What's your hair line called? It's called the Phoenix line. After my son, the Phoenix Coco Brown line. Phoenix line. But be out in these and streets swinging. Custom made wigs. They are custom made to your head. They're oh. handmade, hand sewn from the minute you order them. After we get the measurements of your head, and they're going to come in four different styles. I'm super excited. So is this? Are they going to be able to order it through your website? Through my website, as well as through the website that we're creating for the um hair um the wig line. Okay. And. Half of all pro, um, pro, the proceeds from each wig uh -huh. goes to different charities. And we've picked Wigs of Love, which provides custom-made hair pieces to women battling cancer and lupus. Okay. Juvenile diabetes. And we're also picking a child that we're going to sponsor every holiday. Wow. For family. So buying wigs for a purpose. Exactly. I like it. Exactly. So Coco, CocoBrownForLife.com, if you want to, you know, just watch the progression of when your yes, website. Go to my website. Stay on my Instagram, Coco Brown, One Funny Mama. Coco Brown, One Funny Mama. That's I got that I'm down here. the most. Okay. You know, um, Single Mom Struggles That Can Be Cured With Wine is my late night talk show that I do on Instagram live. Make sure you tune in and check that out. Usually it's around between 10 and 11 o'clock at night if I'm not working. Um, sometimes later, but check it out, you know. And I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm doing me right now. You know what I'm saying? Everything will come, if you plant the seeds, you ain't got to watch the plant grow. Sometimes you just plant it, water it, and walk away. You'll know it's grown because you'll look behind you and see the shadow. Okay. I'm saying. I like it. <laughs> Coco Brown, go see her this weekend at the Improv, improvkc.com to get your tickets. I appreciate you stopping thank you by. Thank you for having me, darling. And Come. thanks for having the little get you your tickets at the Wing Place. Yes, Wing Busters <laughs> on 75th and State Line. If you want to go see Coco Brown tonight, I have a four-pack for you, so come out and see me. This is Magic 107.3.